I call this the second P in LPPD. And I'll be clear what that means. Now, now I do have some respect on these things because I'm betting I am the oldest person here. Anybody here 70 or older? Well, there are probably a couple of people who are too feeble to raise their arm. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm thinking I'm going to do That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> so I've been at this for a long time. In fact, I've been at this for 40 years. As of September, when I started my MIT work on the uh, motor vehicle industry. 40 years ago, amazing. So in that time, a lot of things can happen. And let's see if we can benefit from those things. Uh, the term lean production was uh, introduced by our MIT team in 1987. If you all know John Cratchit, who is now the CEO of Waymo, which is the Google uh, subsidiary that's going to bring you autonomy or not. Uh, it had the idea, and I wrote it on the board. I remember writing lean on the whiteboard at MIT because we needed a name for a phenomenon that we had documented, and not just discovered, but documented, we really had the evidence. And we needed to write an article, and we didn't have a name. The article was going to be called The Triumph of the Blank Production System, and we had to fill in the blank. So I got the whole team in the room, said, let's lock the door over here until we got a name for this darn thing. And uh, the idea was it does more value, creates more value, less, so let's call it. Okay. And then that was widely popularized in the machine book, 29 years ago, I still get a teeny bit of royalty. I always get a teeny bit of royalty because the way it was set up, everybody else got all the money. But that's okay. <laughs> I got a Okay? But wait a minute. Lean production. Lean production. If you read the book, and uh, by the way, million copies, 23 languages. I've signed a gazillion of them. I sometimes have time to ask, what did you read? And what they say is, oh, this is a great book about manufacturing. I said, really, manufacturing? Well, it turned out what they read, what they heard, they didn't read, what they heard was it's about factories, making products with fewer defects, shorter throughput times, and more cost by applying the techniques. Okay? That's what they heard. So, wait a minute, if you actually read the book, I know for a fact, I wrote every word, if you actually read the book, there are five chapters, equal length. One is on product development. One is on lean supplier management and how you develop and create lean customer support, something I'll call lean fulfillment, what you might call production, but uh, to me, production, uh, you've got to take the order, you have to get the stuff together, you have to organize the people, you have to do whatever you have to do, and you have to get it to you want it. <coughs> I call that fulfillment. Okay? And then finally, a management system, lean management. Go with it. Uh, we had lean management in mind as the alternative to modern management. I think of that as Toyota versus GM. And we said in the book very clearly you need all five to have a lean enterprise. You can put it all together. And of course, what people heard is this is a book about factories. Okay? Because the factory, the car plant, Charlie Chaplin, the silly line, is just such a powerful metaphor that everybody's prepared to. You know, it's pattern recognition, is a lot of what our brain does. Is I see pattern, I see Charlie, I see these in the lunch. And we were uh, having pretty uh, bold there, so I said, look, you can apply this to every value creating activity in every organization, every industry, and every country. You'll do it. So that's what we said a long time ago. Well, wait a minute. Let's go ahead to 2008. 2008, which is 18 years later. And we are preparing a book called Lean Product and Process Development. Lean Product and Process Development. The author, uh, Al Ward, is no longer with us. And uh, so, uh, Nir Ward and John Shook uh, have been uh, writing a book based on a bunch of videos and some notes uh, by the author who uh, is no longer with us. And I put the process in that book. I was the publisher. It's, in, it's not just product development, it's product and process development. Because every product must have a fulfillment process. Right? So this book is going to be about the product and process development. Now I just looked at it before coming out. And I found what I thought I would find. There are actually three pages. There are actually three pages on fulfillment and production systems. 
Everything else is on rock. That's not Al's fault. Al would have gotten around to it. But I was pushed a little bit to take this again. And uh, not surprisingly, not uh, their fault, probably my fault, when people read the book, what they heard was this is a book about lean product development. It appears about lean product and process development. Okay? And what I meant, uh, just, just to repeat, is that yes, it's about lean product, but it's also about the way it's delivered to the customer through a fulfillment process. And we ought to be talking about both at once. And to this point, uh, this community, this is the sub community and the lean community, this is the lean product and process development community, has mostly been talking about process, about product, right? But nobody's talking. But I mean, it creates an interesting situation. But I think we're giving away half of the benefit of the opportunity. We're talking about half, which is product development. Not really seriously talking about process development. And that's kind of weird. Uh, you wouldn't think of developing a brand new product as just like the product you had before. But apparently, it's not so weird to think about a brand new product that is fulfilled through a crummy, not at all lean process, it's just like the process you had before. So I'm trying to move us on. Uh, beyond this. So a consequence of two. Uh, one is that there's a loss of really important feedback between the fulfillment system, the process, and the development process. Because imagine that you could fulfill this product, call it manufacturing life, with half the cost, half the time, half the effort, whatever. That is a big feedback on the product developer. You can now afford more content for the customer. Or if you must, you can afford to be more aggressive on price. Or you can give the money to the CEO for this hobby project. Or whatever. That's probably happened to a few people. But it is not taking full advantage of the resources that you can give, use to give power to the product. And that's a shame. So we ought to do better. And then a second point there is that a failure to think about the process as you think about the product creates a splendid business opportunity for the lean consulting industry. Because they can come along, either in-house consultants, the CI, the OPEX folks, or the external folks, and they can immediately start doing Kaizen when your new product encounters problems in fulfillment. Okay, they call it Kaizen, but it's actually rework. You know, Kaizen's improvement raises the standard rework is you were going to be here, you're down here. So you do rework to get back to here. Uh, the Japanese even have a word for it, Tuzin, which is uh, loosely, uh, all Japanese uh, words seem to be pretty loose, I don't speak Japanese, but uh, it's Kaizen that shouldn't be necessary because you should have got it right the first time. Okay, okay so don't do any Tuzin, folks. We're going to cut that out. It's moved. Tuzin's moved. And we want to get it right. Get it Okay. So the consequence more generally, let's say, is the bulk of the work of the broader lean community, in my time, my 40 years, has been doing Kaizen on faulty fulfillment processes that should never have been launched in production. So, hey, 40 years, you can figure something out. Let's do better. What can we do? Well, okay, you, you LPPD <coughs> folks, could insist that new products be developed with a lean Fulfillment process. And that's part of your job. Isn't that what the chief engineer is supposed to see? To? And you could insist that we do product and process development simultaneously and concurrently, if the concurrency thing is there, with lots of people involved on an equal basis. But right now, our occasional uh, wander through uh, folks. Uh, we might have some equality. And we can facilitate this, we would need to facilitate this by reaching agreement on that which goes to the police across the enterprise about what product and process.